Hey guys, welcome to Learning Accounting. I'm Jim of the Kabir, the founder of Learning Accounting, and this particular channel is expected to treat all related accounting issues, especially for professional accountants. So we'll be looking at courses like financial reporting, corporate reporting, or strategic business reporting for all type of exams, be it the ACCA exams or the ICANN exams or other related um, tertiary education exams like the masters, the postgraduate or the undergraduate issues, you know, all those exams will be looking into them. Now I would like you to watch the video and you know drop any questions in the comment section and I'll be here to answer your question for you. So stay tuned and you know watch the video to the end. Hello guys welcome back to learning accounting again today and here is again is another least question. But this time around, uh, this is an examinable style of question. And you know, you could see it in an ACC exam or you could see it in an ICANN exam. But what I try to do today is to use an Excel sheet to answer the question. So it's different from using my marker and the screen to write down this thing or putting it on Excel sheet and you see how simple it can get. But well, again, one of the interesting things I'm going to be doing here in this question, let me quickly highlight that for you guys, is that I'm going to be treating the list question both in advance and in arrears. And I'm also going to be showing you guys the, uh, what do they call it, the extract, the profit or loss extract and the financial position extract so that you have an idea of how to actually handle the list question. So um, let's go right into the question then. So here the question is saying that a requirement paragraph assume that the actual method is used to calculate the finance charge over the list term, calculate the finance charge and develop and depreciation charge, which should be shown in the company's financial statements for each of the year to 31st December 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18. That's about five years. In addition, calculate the liability to FJ Limited at the end of each of these years and show how the liability should be split between current liabilities and non-current liabilities. So we're going to show the extract basically. That's what the question requires us to do. Now before then, um, this question, I've sort of um, adapted this question and what I'm trying to do in this question is to treat it in line with IFRS 16, the new lease arrangement, and the new lease, which is the right of user asset, because the lease term is five years, meaning it's more than one year, and makes it the right of user assets. So the first thing we are going to do, as the question did not give us the information, is to calculate the PV of the future lease payment. That is the first thing we are expected to do in any lease question. To calculate the PV of the lease payment. So let me put it down here as solution. Now, for those that are writing any exam that will probably need to use um, Excel to answer their question, of course, some Excels will be limited in scope, like the ACC Excel. So you need to know how to manage your Excel. But for me, because I'm using the main Excel, I might have to be using some shortcuts uh, formulas to solve my own problem okay so the first thing we have is the present value of the future lease payment so that's the first thing we want to calculate and to calculate the pv of the future lease payment we have the first thing yes we have the cash flow. That's the installment that will be paid. We have the DCF, which is the discount factor, in this case at 10%. And we have the PV. Now bear in mind, in respect to this, I'm going to treat it first of all um, using advance. I think that will be the first thing I'll do using advanced and later I'll treat it again using arrears. Okay, so um, if it's in advance, we have 2014. Then, like I said, I'll be using from last. So this is 2015 because for the remaining 
2016, 17, and 18, of course. So I've done that already. Now, if it is in advance, year one starts from year zero, while year zero starts with year one. So I can again do my summation, just a little bit of calculation down there, and you can see it. So I'm going to change the font color of this because. because I want you to see it in a different color entirely. So let me put it in red. So I'm going to change the font color. Now, year one for advance is year zero actually, because you are paying at the beginning of the current year. So time value of money kind of apply in that case. The amount we'll be paying for the three, four year, five year period is already here, which is 26,380. So 26, 380. And 26, 380, of course, is what we're paying for the five year period. So that's going to be constant. Our discount factor year one is on year zero. So it's as good as saying um, year zero will be definitely, you can say one, zero. Um, let me say one point. Zero zero because here one will be one point zero zero. Uh, let me make sure my decimals are showing. So my decimals are showing. Year two will be one equals to one divided by one point one. That's year two. Year three will be this figure divided by 1.1 and like that so I can just drag them down to have here four five like that okay so again going to try to abbreviate these figures to two decimal places so let me do some formatting here so we've done that now the PVs the PV, of course, is this plus this, and multiply by that, rather, not, not um, plus, not an addition. So you have that, and again, bringing these figures down, we have the PVs. Therefore, to sum this all up, we get this figure. So here is the PV of the future lease payment. Now, if you look at the cash price given to us, it's almost close to it. It was almost close to the 110, 110, just 500, slightly 500 difference, just almost close to it. But we've calculated the PV, and this is in line with the required standard. Of course, like I done earlier, I did not format all my cells completely. So let me just format everything here since um, all my work to look a little bit neat and organized. So let me just do that again and have this. Okay, so it looks so neat and organized. Now the next thing we want to do is what goes to the asset side. Now because this is a right of user assets, so let me write it down, right of use assets. We are going to have the asset side and we are also going to have the liability side. Now the asset side, the lease asset, of course is the PV of the future lease payment. So I'm going to have for 2014 and down to 2018. So we have it down to 2018. And of course, the, the value of the lease assets, we've calculated that figure already. Depreciation. Now, of course, the depreciation will be this figure, as a matter of fact, 
let me open a bracket this figure minus now the question has given us the residual value to be 12,000 so minus 12,000 close bracket divide by again there's something interesting here the least term is five years but the um, useful life is seven years and they say FG will obtain legal ownership of the asset at the end of the lease term. Because it's going to obtain legal ownership of the asset at the end of the lease term, we are going to depreciate with the original useful life, which is seven years, and not the lease term. But if the question had not mentioned that, then we would have depreciated using the lease term. So here we are dividing it by seven. And that gives us this. And the carrying value. giving me this so again like I said I'm going to do a quick formatting okay so I've done the formatting now there's something we call the cock screw calculation so just bringing back the opening balance which will be for 2015 i'm going to just repeat this figure and because depreciation is a straight line meaning it will be constant and summation will remain the same which is what we have here of course so now for those using excel you can see how life made easy you can just have this summation As simple as that so we have the asset side already so by the side here let me see statement of profit or loss extract of course statement of profit or loss extract just picking 2014 again and scroll down so I have the same figures, but this time around is the precision charge I'll be having here. So for those using Excel, you can just repeat the figures as you have them. So the precision charge is constant over the period as well. Okay, so we have the statement of financial position extract and profit or loss, sorry. Then we also have the statement of financial position extract. And the statement of financial position extract, just pick 2014 back as it is and have it down then we have assets we have lease assets and just the carrying values again that we are going to bring in okay so that's basically that Okay, so let's come back here. Now, the liability side. Now, for the liability side, we have the lease liability. Um, let me bring down this date. The I think. It's clear, but let me just bring down the dates. So the lease liability also is the same PV that we have because we are doing it in advance, installments or rentals will come first. Now this installment or rentals, because it is in advance, from second year, 
on second year, it's your current liabilities figure from year two. It's your current liability figure, but you know from year one, just picking the figure. So from the second year is your current liability figure, and this will give us a figure. Now this figure is your long-term lease obligation again from second year. Again, it's your long-term lease obligation from second year, so it's important to know that. But from first year, it doesn't really mean much. Interest, interest rate implicit in the lease is ten percent. So this is what I'm going to do here. Let me just bring it here. Interest rate. To be ten percent, and the reason why I'm bringing it there is because I want to anchor that ten percent. So we have this figure multiplied by ten percent. And what I've done is I've anchored the cell multiplied by ten percent, as you can see, giving us that. Then we have our Lease liability at the year end, of course. Lease liability balance CD. Let me use that word. Okay, so the lease liability CD, we have it to be the summation of these two figures. So we have that. Of course, let me put the double line on that. So now that we have this, we can as well make it the opening balance for 2015 because that's the opening balance, of course. Our installment is going to be constant already. Installment is constant, so let me just bring back this figure. This computation we've done already, I'll bring it back as it is. This will also come back as it is. As a matter of fact, everything else will come back as it is. So it calculated itself. Now, if we sum up, of course, to 2018 auto summation, okay, I must have mixed it up somewhere. Oh no, I've not mixed it up somewhere because we are not supposed to have anything at the end of 2018. So, in a minute, let me quickly format the cells again. Okay, so now that I formatted the cells, you can see we, are not, we didn't mix anything up. So, this is because the asset sees the lease liability becomes zero at the end of the last year. As a matter of fact, we have our finance charge according to the question. And the finance charge is what we've calculated already, which are these figures here. Of course, I'll bring it as a negative figure. So we have it, so there is no interest to be paid in the last year while in this case we have our liability side and we have the non-current liability uh, let me abbreviate these figures these words non-current liability non-current liability lease liability then current liability lease liability okay so like i mentioned earlier your non current liability starts from year two figure and which is this figure we have here so you can move down like that of course nothing should be in 2017 and i said that your current liability 
is also your installment from year two. Okay, um, again, let me remove the minus sign for this financial position extract. So this is what you get in the typical extract. This is the solution to the question. We've treated the asset side. We've treated the liability side. We've showed how it should be carried over the period when it comes to advance. Okay, so it's, of course, I might look fast the way I've done it, but it's because I've been able to use shortcuts in answering mine. Um, but definitely, if you're good with Excel, you should also be able to do this calculation yourself. Now, on the other hand, if we are going to treat it in areas, like I said, using the same information, the solution now in areas. Now, having it in areas, again, we want to calculate the PV, present value of the future lease payment. Now, to calculate the PV of the future lease payment in the case of this, we have again 2014. 2014 plus one, and I bring it down to get 2017, 2018, like that. Don't forget, <clears throat> okay, I think I need a line here. So this I'll call it yes. I have my cash flow. I have the DCF at 10% and I have the PVs again. Now, but for this one, in this case, year one is year one, year two will be year two, year three will be year three and so on and so forth. So year one is year one, year two is year two, year three is year three and so on and so forth, like I've mentioned already. The PV and the cash flow, sorry, the figure is 26,380 as we have it, remains the same. Uh oh, Okay, then the discount factor, and the discount factor we have it to be one divided by one point one, and that gives us for the four five years. Uh oh, again, should be able to use your cal your cal Excel well, because divided by one point one for year two and down to the line we get here three four and five. Okay, the PV, remember we are doing the multiplication now, which is this multiply by this, and it gives us that, and we sum it up down the line, and the summation gives us the present value. You can see this one is 10,000 lower than what we initially had. 10,000 lower than what we initially had. Again, I'm going to quickly format these cells. So it looks neat. Now I've achieved that. The next thing is the asset side again, just like we did. So we have the assets. And like I said, it's a right of use asset. Therefore, the lease assets because let me just pick down the dates I've already used there so that I don't waste my time calculating it all over again. Okay, so depreciation charge. Mm -hmm. 
the value of the lease assets we have it to be this figure today and it's going to be the uh, uh oh things like this can happen okay so depreciation will be open bracket this minus residual value which is 12,000 close bracket divide by 7 again because that's a useful life since they are retaining the asset at the end of the lease period that gives us this and the carrying value because we sum it up and it gives us this Now this figure is the closing balance for this, which we have. Depreciation will be constant, which we have this. And again, this figure will be summing it up also. So we can sum everything up again, just like we did. And we have our total figures. Now I can quickly format them as well. So that my workings look neat. So I have that. Same thing we've done just now, we're doing again. So the statement probably I should just pick the information from up so that I don't waste my time. We have the statement of profit or loss extract. Let me also pick this figure as well. We have 2005 extract. So, segment of profit or loss extract. We've picked it out. As a matter of fact, let me see if I go down a little with this. I should get other information. Okay, so you see, other information comes. Just delete all these ones. I don't need them. So again, like I said, if you are good with your Excel, you shouldn't have any issue with all this. So just picked all these figures. I don't have to start writing them all over again. That's the advantage. Okay, so we have that. Now, the, the precision charge, we've already calculated it, so just bring back the figures as they are. So let's do the liability side now. So for the liability side, when it comes to areas, it's a different thing entirely. Now, why I said it's a different thing entirely is that, okay, let me pick the dates. In the case of the liability, interest comes first before installment. So interest rate is still 10%. But well, like I said, interest comes first before installment. So interest and the interest will be 10,000 multiplied by cost 10%. So we have that figure. Then we also have installment. An installment figure, we have it again to be this figure here, which will then give us the lease liability at the year end. And the lease liability CD, because the submission of these figures here which gives us this now the difference is that in the case of this one the lease liability um, is your long-term lease obligation long-term lease obligation from 
year two. Now claim this obligation from year two. Long term lease obligation from year two. That's what it is. While our short term lease obligation is the difference between the total lease obligation and the long term lease obligation. Now, again, the total lease obligation is the current year balance cd but the long term is obligation is the balance cd of the subsequent year in that light if we have this year again which is the opening here we bring it the interest will automatically calculate itself if i bring it down for the installment of course i'll use the same figure and this will give us the total summation. Now we have for year two, and we can calculate down to year five. And you can see at the end of year five, we have zero there because there should be no liability at the end of year five. Again, I'll just quickly do a format here. So that my work can look neat. Now, like I said, short term lease obligation will be your long term total lease obligation minus your long term lease obligation, which starts from year two. And that gives us this figure. And we run it down to get nil as well. In that light, you can see that. This becomes the same thing at the end of what year two. So our interest, we can quickly bring the figure of our interest. Okay, the asset balance carried down figure, we bring it. The long term lease liability figure, like I said, start from year two. We bring it and the short term lease liability figure. We also bring it. So, in this case, you can see this figure is moving down in year in the um second to the last year because that's your final obligation at that date that is again we've done for areas so you can see we have areas and we have advanced it didn't take me so much time because i'm using my uh, what they call it i'm using my excel sheet but if i were to write it of course i knew it would have taken me so much time to actually achieve this so again this is the question as we have it fj and i will be sharing a link of this solution at the comment section so that you can download the solution if you choose to but you can see this is the question and here is the solution to the question so we have the advance which is how it should be treated and we also have areas as well let me just take out this last column here so that okay so we have this so for this one let me quickly also format these cells like i did make it red okay so i've done that so basically here it is using arrears and advance under the right of user assets, how to treat the lease arrangements and its, and its extract is what I've just shown us. Okay, guys, I hope you'll be able to take your time to watch the video over and over again to understand it. I'm sure you have difficulty understanding it. 
and again this is learning accounting i'll see you guys again in another session do have a wonderful day now that you're done watching the video i'm sure it was insightful and it was educational make sure you subscribe on our youtube channel and like our videos and also share these videos with other friends who might likely have the same exam as you and i'm sure we'll be seeing again in another session this is learning accounting